Hey y'all, it's Erica from The Broken Spine. Welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, thank you for stopping by. So I am going to do the Black History Month book tag or the Black History Month tag. And it was created by Helene uh, from Books by uh, Linez. And I, I originally did this. Okay, so let me back up. Originally, I started to film this, oh, like when I first saw the tag um, at the end of January, but then I didn't like it. And then I tried to refilm it and I didn't like it again. And then I finally did it as a, um, in a live stream uh, reading sprints that I did uh, a couple weeks ago. And I will link that uh, in the cards because there are gonna be a whole lot of booktubers that uh, have, black booktubers that have been, that were mentioned that I'm not gonna mention here. So you'll wanna head over there to check out all of the other black booktubers that were mentioned and um, hopefully subscribe and Definitely, if you subscribe, please make sure you engage with their contents. So let's just go ahead and get right on into the questions. There are seven questions. Um, so the first question is, what is a book everyone should be reading during Black History Month? Give one fiction and one nonfiction. Well, I don't follow instructions very well. Um, so I'm going to give you two nonfiction and two fiction. So first of all, the fiction that I have, one is um, Audrey Lorde's Sister Outsider. This was actually um, the book club pick for um, the Black Future Book Club. Um, due to unforeseen circumstances, for me and another one of the hosts. Um, we weren't able to uh, do the live for this, so hopefully we will get a, get around to doing the live for this. But back to this. Audrey Lord talks about being a lesbian, being a mother, being um, a black lesbian feminist. Um, she talks about sexism in America. She, there, it's, it's, it's a lot in here, age, race, classism, sexism, um, and she does it, um, I feel it, it's, she writes these essays, I feel unapologetically and with, but yet she takes care in, in writing them. I highly recommend this, um, check it out, give it a read, and you can read it slowly because how many essays are there? Um, there are, I think, 15. 15, uh, maybe, but um, you can read a, read an essay a day. So check this one out. Um, the next nonfiction that I have is Ta-Nehisi Coates's um, Between the World and Me. I read this a while ago, and it's a letter to his son um, about being a black man in America, basically. And um, it was, it was, it was a hard read and it's also it's so it's not it's written very stream of consciousness and that's not my cup of tea but while i was reading it i didn't i i didn't really notice that it was written in a stream of consciousness kind of way so that says something right there so i really did enjoy this and i recommend that you pick this up as well um, another, well, not another one, but my fiction picks are, um, the first one is Octavia E. Butler's Kindred. I reread this, um, during, for the Octavia E. Butler slow read that Njiri at Onyx Pages, um, Tati from Musical Tati and Isis, who does not have a channel, but she has an online bookstore called Sister Sci-Fi, um, Sister, Sister Sci-Fi. Um, and I so much, I enjoyed this so much more the second 
time around. And this is about our main character, Dana, who travels back to, it takes place in the 70s. Dana is married to a white man and she and her husband are moving into a new home and Dana is pulled back into antebellum, into the antebellum south in Maryland. And um, it is about her having to save a white relative and basically in order for her to be born um, and the trials and the tribulations that go along with that, the physical and the mental and the emotional aspects of her being pulled back into antebellum, into slavery and, and having to endure slavery. And then she jumps back to present day and um, it's really, it, it can be jarring and it is it is graphic at points so i i this is one that i recommend um i love octavia e butler's works or her writing style it doesn't go so i pick it up and read this the next one that i have is probably not probably it is a book that i felt 100% seen in, and that is Slay by Brittany Morris. Um, this is about Kira, our main character, who is in high school, and she is one of four. It's her, her sister, her boyfriend, and I think one other black girl, um, new black girl. And it talks about, and she, and Kira has created a video game called slay and um it it's it's all about black excellence and uh people <clears throat> excuse me and people are are calling it a racist game after one person uh is killed and it talks and it goes through her struggle with trying to come out with that she's the creator of this game it talks about um hair black hair um, it talks about not being black enough um, and just other things that it talks about. There are people out there um, who've read it that say that the video game aspect of it is not realistic. I encourage you to read this and it is not about the video game aspect of it. The, the, the game is just a way to move the plot forward. It's used as a device. Um, but there are so many important important themes in here that that are brought to the forefront and that we need to to take a look at and to reflect on in order to move forward as well so um i highly recommend slay um so question number two is to name um, which black booktuber would you recommend watching and why and that is the one i'm going to link up in the cards so you can click on but just off the top of my head right now i would say injiri at onyx pages um injiri talks about afro reads and discusses in depthly um um, Afrofuturism, science fiction, fantasy, um, new booktuber, and I believe they have two videos up already, and that's Emma Ray Empowered. Um, uh, of course, Ashley A Bookish Realm, Briette Locked Wiktician. Um, then there's Harley at the Cerebral Hedonist, um, Chloe from Thistle and Verse, um, Deidre from Shade Tree Reads. Um, uh, oh my gosh, there are so many, so, so many. And I am, right now I'm drawing a blank. Jesse from Bowties and Books, um, uh, Shane from Luxurious Blue, um, so I'm going to stop there. I, uh, there are so many, but anyway, like I said, I'm going to link up in the cards, um, uh, so you can go to... Uh, the live stream that I did of the book tag and 
one, you can get more suggestions for Black Booktubers, um, get more books that you should read um, during the month, um, anticipate, just a whole bunch of stuff um, that, um, that people in the chat recommended. So just check that one out too. Um, question number three, what is your favorite book written by a Black author from an African country? So um, that is a hard one because I don't have, I'm not very well read uh, as far as Black authors from African countries are concerned. I mean, I could name off um, African authors that have moved from Africa to the States or to Europe or something like that. But as far as African authors that still live in Africa or who lived, when I say lived, I mean lived and died in Africa. Um, I don't know that many. Um, but one that I will say I read and I really enjoyed and I'm going to look to see if there are any more books in his body of work and that's Fernandan Oyono and this is Houseboy and this takes place um in Cameroon and it's it's about a houseboy and it's about um colonization and what colonization has done um to to the to Africans, I will broadly say that, but um, their impact, what the impact that colonization has had, and how um, those Cameroon is it. Cameroonian, yeah, I wanted to make sure I said that right, how Cameroonians, um, some bought into the, the colonizers world view, um, and how they tried to change themselves to be, um, less threatening, if, if you will, but yet they are still considered a threat by the colonizers so in this little in this very little book um of not even barely a hundred pages it it packs a wallop um really enjoyed it and i am currently reading this one now wife of the gods and i'm reading this for um well oh i will say this i'm reading it for blackathon for um the mystery thriller um challenge which is hosted by jesse and this is the group book um so um quay Quarty, i believe that's how you pronounce his name and i've just started reading this and i'm really quite engaged in it so i'm hoping that this will if not become a favorite, at least be up there so i'm really enjoying it so far and i don't want to get into it because I, when I say I just started it, I mean, I literally just started it. Um, so, but um, it's it's about a detective that is, he's a dedicated family man and a rebel in the office. And he is sent to go investigate the murder of um, someone. So, um, yeah, that didn't really tell you much about it but um I can't really talk about it because I don't know too much about it so far um so question number four what is your favorite black classic so um I have Lorraine Hansberry's um play A Raisin in the Sun I don't know if you can see that okay there we go A Raisin in the Sun I absolutely love this play um and Lorraine Hansberry died way too young um I think she was only 30 something um anyway way too young and such a promising um playwright and author so um i love this play it talks about um the, the black family is 
lives in the projects. The father has recently died and they, from the insurance, they, they have a little bit of money and the mother wants to move to the suburbs, but her son, Walter, wants to invest money into uh, a liquor store. And it is, it's heartbreaking in so many ways because Walter wants to be somebody um, and he and he feels that in order to be somebody he has to be somebody and to be respected he has to have money um, and because that's that's what society has presented to him and um, they it's 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 so much it is so so much and I there there are instances in here I've read this I don't know how many times and each time I get to a part a specific part and I just start to cry because I'm like no you don't have to feel that way um but it is it it tugs at my heartstrings every time so yes um and I couldn't didn't know where I put it. And I have W.E.B. Du Bois's um, Souls of Black Folk. Um, and this edition has, and this is a Penguin classic. It also has The Talented Tenth and The Souls of White Folk. But um, the one that I, the particular essay that I wanted to just focus on, not really even focus on, but really and truly recommend that you read and you can find it online, download it, read it, um, PDF form. Um, it's one that I recommend. It's of our spiritual strivings, and it's the very first um, essay uh, in Souls of Black Folk. And this, and that particular essay is where um, Du Bois talks about um, double consciousness, and what it's a it's a term that he coined to describe um, how Black people relate to their inside and their outside world. So we now kind of say code switching. So when we are with our friends and our family, we act one way, but when we're out in public and amongst white society, we act another way. We talk a different way. Um, so, and it talks about in this particular essay, um, what the double consciousness is and the detrimental effects that it has on the, on the black person and um, how how we move in between black society and white society and other and other societies and how we seem to do it very seamlessly um, because that's what we have to do so um, again it is our spiritual strivings of our spiritual strivings. So I, that is, I recommend reading all of the soul of black folks, but if you read nothing else, read of our spiritual strivings. Um, yes. So let's see, moving on. Um, what movie, book to movie, adaptation, documentary, would you recommend watching during Black History Month? Um, I would say the 13th that is based off of the 13th Amendment and the prison system. Um, I Am Not Your Negro, which is based off of James Baldwin's unfinished work of the same name. And um, one that I I love, or I don't want to say love, one that I really enjoy and it was just actually on PBS and that was Freedom Riders. So, um, those are ones that I would recommend. Um, what's on your number six? What's on your TBR for Black History Month? Um, that is one that I am not going to answer because I read Black literature every month, all year long. So um, let's just say all of these that I just mentioned um, should be. I'm saying it, all of these that I just mentioned should be on your list for Black History Month. Um, and if you want, you can read one a month. How about that? So I recommend that. Um, 
of which new releases by black writers are you looking forward to the most this year i have a list <laughs> i have a whole list and i'm just going to name them um i have which comes out on march 30th liberty by caitlin greenwich i saw the cover and i didn't care what it was about so that is a, a cover cover love one um april 20th which is steeped in gold by sienna smart and that was another one that i saw the cover of and i was like i i want it um May 4th is Sorrow Land by Rivers Solomon. I don't know what it's about, but it's by Rivers Solomon and I don't care. So I'm, I'm going to buy it anyway. Um, the other one, uh, uh, June 1st, The Other Black Girl. And um, oops, I did not get the author. I didn't write the author for that one. So, but I will leave pictures of all of those um somewhere probably over here because it looks like the, over here there's more space so um yeah if you watch this video consider yourself tagged and um yeah that's it right i've answered all of the questions so yes that is going to be it for me today and i will see you guys the next time around